Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today we are going to be taking a look at quite possibly the biggest mod I have ever seen for Beeman G Drive. It's called Wabimp, that's spelled W B I M P, and yes, that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. And to give you an idea of just how many vehicles there are, I'm putting it into show configuration mode, and then I'm going to put it to only show vehicles from this mod. Okay, check this out. As I scroll through this list, do you see how slowly the scroll bar on the right side is moving? That's how many vehicles there are. There are tons of them. And not all of them are just like really basic things like, oh, it's a slightly bigger engine. A lot of them have custom parts that can really significantly change the way the vehicle looks. So if I really wanted to review everything in this mod, it would take dozens of videos, which I very well might do because we can easily do sections like we could say here's all the cool stuff for just the pessima in a video and then we could do here's all the cool stuff for the next vehicle like the pickle and so on but right now I just want to make this video as an overview to show you some of the cool stuff in this mod and I figured out the best way to probably do that is to show you one version of each of the stock vehicles so we're gonna start off with the 200BX and the coolest thing about the 200BX is, is some of them have a notchback version like the Street Drift Edition although for some reason this one doesn't have a trunk on it I don't know if that's intentional or not but I'm gonna add one on real quickly so you can actually see it with the trunk because it's important because the trunk is part of the customized parts so to give you a comparison I'm gonna grab the Bishu Vision Concept this is also a part of the mod but it has the normal body style so this one has the really long sloped rear end and then over here, this one has the notchback body style. So on this one, it's a lot steeper on the rear end. And this reminds me a lot of the AE86, where it has both liftback and notchback options that were produced. And before we drive the street drift, just look at this guy, man. He looks cool. He has all these crazy custom parts because he's supposed to be a concept car. And it really makes sense based on the looks. So with the street drift version, you definitely want to drift going downhill. It can go up the hill, no problem but just doesn't quite have enough power to drift and go up the hill at the same time. But if you go downhill, oh, you're not gonna have a problem drifting because you can go over 100 miles per hour through here easily. And we are not gonna drift at that high of a speed. Or will we? I'm gonna try a monster drift on this corner. I'm probably gonna crash, but here we go. Big drifting, go! Oh yes, this is good. Transmission downshift. Oh, transmission, why are you bogging me down? This is a manual transmission. I'm supposed to have it shifting myself. If I was shifting myself, I could have pulled it through there and that would have been great. All right, next corner. Let's do really nice precision. We're gonna tap the bumper and continue driving. Get the tap. Oh, yeah, oh, well, no, we're stuck. That's okay, we only wanna spend like a minute per vehicle anyways. So I'll bring this guy back up here and we're gonna take a look at the next one, which is the Ibishu 200NX. So yeah. In addition to modifying existing vehicles, they're straight up brand new vehicles for you to drive. They are based on other stock vehicles, but most of the time they have so many changes to them that they do really feel like a brand new vehicle. So I do plan to have a full video that goes over the 200NX model in particular, but here's just a quick overview of it because I wanted to show off all the best features in this video. So when you look at this vehicle, it looks a lot like the Nissan NX from the 90s, which makes sense considering it's called the 200NX. The inspiration there is made pretty obvious. So this car is a small front wheel drive coupe, and with the downhill and the big engine option I chose, it is able to get over 100 miles per hour if we don't wreck it beforehand. I'm just gonna go flat out. We ain't gonna let up until this thing is wrecked. I can't steer to the right, it is wrecked. There it goes, flying into 100 pieces. And a very nice job accelerating down that hill. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy back up to the road. That is kind of a weird place to be in. You can even see the secret warp hole down below the map. You're not supposed to see that. Yeah, let's uh, try to get off of the wall and back onto the road. Perfect. So next up, we're going to the ETK 800. And this one's probably one of the less interesting ones. We just have a couple of ones that are called the Bremens. And with these ones, you have a couple of small tweaks to the visuals, but most importantly, it gets a nice V8 engine in it. And you can have it either naturally aspirated or turbocharged. Of course, I picked the turbocharged option. And it does have a pretty cool sound to it that I don't recognize from any other vehicle, so I'll let you have a listen as we drive across the water.
And I really smushed it there. Oh, look at that side. That is bashed in. All right, so next up, we're going to be taking a look at the Barstow. And with the Barstow, we have a very, very minor change to the way the front of the vehicle looks. It's so small that you can barely tell the difference even when you have them side by side. So to show you the difference, let me go ahead and grab an older Barstow out. We'll grab a 353 V8 version. And the difference here is a little bit hard to notice if you use the wrong camera angle. So you got to look at it from the side. So you see on this one how the bumper really overhangs a lot from the front of the vehicle. But if you look at the facelifted one, it sits a lot more flush with the front of the vehicle. Now if we look at it from this angle, you really can't tell a difference. They look pretty close to identical from this angle. So which is the new one and which is the old one? I gotta remember. This was the new one. It doesn't drive any different than the pre-facelift edition. It just has the slightly different look. So we'll just find something nice to crash the new face into and see what the damage looks like. Got a bunch of trees up here. Trees are always, always a great option. But if I can get up to a high speed before impact, that just makes the crash even better. And with a big fat V8, it's also pretty easy to do that. Going into the tree. Did I hit the facelifted part of the vehicle? Sort of. The whole front has fallen off. That's the part we needed to look at. Where did it go? Okay, so this is um, what's left after the impact. Okay, let's try to get it out of the tree. Come on, you. It's not going to come out of the tree. Well, the front fell off, and it seemed to have crashed perfectly fine. I say seem to because you really can't see much. There we go. There's the front. I couldn't even tell which part was the front up until now. So anyways, we'll bring this guy back over to the road. And I like driving from this spot, so we'll do it again. But this time, we're going to use a blue buck. And with the blue buck, you got some cool-looking wagons. And you know what's cooler than a wagon? A fast wagon. So we're going to get the one with the V8. And when I look at the blue buck, I never thought this thing would look great as a wagon. But it does. It looks great as a wagon. I think I like it as a wagon better than the normal version, even. So the first thing we got to test with this thing is how strong is the wagon roof? which means we gotta try to flip it over. And the thing about the Minchi Drive is it's very easy to flip a vehicle over when you don't want to. But if you actually want to flip a vehicle over on purpose, very, very difficult. Like going up the hill a little bit like that, maybe? Nope, not this time. Well, that didn't squish the roof the way I expected, but I bet we have some damage on wherever the roof is. Yeah, it's definitely damaged and we can't see anything. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and save it, reset it back to the area over here, and then we can take a look at how the roof handled that. So it basically hit right there into the tree, in the roof. And overall, the damage held up surprisingly well for how violent that impact is. And now we can move on to the next vehicle, which is the Bolide. And with the Bolide, we have something a little bit unexpected. We have a rally version of the Bolide with a bunch of ground clearance. And with a rally car, you always have to ask the question, what drive is it? So this is a rear wheel drive car, but it's able to put down the power surprisingly well. In fact, I would say this is just as easy to handle in the off-road areas as a normal Bolide is on the paved areas. It just has a really nice power delivery that works well for a rally car. Now this is not exactly the way rallying usually goes. Usually when you do rally racing, you don't end up upside down. It does happen, but not usually. So we'll get this guy back onto his wheels, and can he still drive? Oh yeah, you see, the rally version, he's strong, he's durable. How about we try to do something that's a little bit more normal rally-like. So instead of flying through the air, we're going to try to drive up this hill. So it's a rough surface, but I feel like it's a very good test for the suspension on this vehicle as well as its ability to put down the power. Because this is not the easiest place to put down the power and it's doing a very, very good job. Because I thought we would get stuck on that hill trying to do something like that, but it made it through great. And the only thing left is to wreck it once more. So airtime and wreckage. Well, not that much wreckage, but it's enough to make it where it doesn't drive too well. Oh, well. Well, that did surprisingly well until it flipped over one final time. So let's go ahead and get back to the road, and we can take a look at the next vehicle. Thankfully, the road is really close to us. It looks like the road just vanishes, kind of. It's an illusion. But it isn't at the same time. Like, the road actually does just stop over here. So that's the dead end. So we only have one option which direction we're going to go. 
So next up, we're going to look at the Ibishu Covet. And with this one, we have a Micron version of the Covet. So the Covet's already a pretty small vehicle. Now, there's one that's even smaller. So to give you a comparison, I'm going to show you the regular Covet next to the Micron. So you can see the Micron is a good little bit shorter than the regular one. And the one I have here has been highly, highly customized. This thing has over 400 horsepower from a little tiny three-cylinder engine. So it has some turbo lag, but once it starts moving, it goes. And this thing's actually quite a blast to drive. Out of all the vehicles in this mod, this might be my favorite to drive. It's just this little tiny go-kart that you can chuck around corners and it handles very, very well. Unless it's upside down. It does not handle so well upside down. See, it's a tiny little car, so it's not that durable. And that's the end of the Micron. It didn't last very long. He's small. He's not very strong, okay? So next up, we got the Charrier. And it seems like most of the options that are available on the Tograk are also available on the Vivas. So we're going to go with the Vivas S410Q Coach Arsenic. And I need another breath after saying that name. It's so long. The only thing longer is the vehicle itself. It kind of follows a similar thing of the Blue Buck, where it's like, make it look really long and cool. This one has a little bit of a minivan feel to it, though. Like, the other one felt very wagonish. This one, a little bit minivanish, but it drives pretty much the same as a regular Vivas. I don't notice any significant difference there. It's still very fast until you crash into a rock, and then after you crash into the rock, well, everything breaks into pieces. And we can almost roll down this hill. Not quite, though. So we are now at the end of the map, which means we're going to have to drive back up the hill. So i got to make sure from here on out we have fast vehicles only. And that should be easy because the next one we're going to be taking a look at is the Grand Marshal. And this is the Dragon. The Dragon's very, very fast. This is basically a drag car, but it looks a bit ridiculous. So it has a wagon look to it, which again is new with this mod. That's kind of a theme. Yeah, they like adding wagons and I like wagons, so this mod makes me very, very happy. But it also adds the wood grain all around this thing. And this would be the fastest wood grain car I have ever seen in BMG Drive. How many wood grain cars have I seen though? Not many. And I know I promised we were going to be using this for the uphill, but I forgot there's a little bit of a downhill and then a flat area before we actually get to the uphill. So we can do a little bit of a cheat to get ourselves back up higher on the mountain. So let's stop this thing before it crashes. Oh, save this, save this, oh, yeah. That was really good. So here's what we can do. We can go up to this car up here that I just left behind. And then we can go to the car we were just driving and teleport it here. That's not the right car. The problem is I got so many cars, I don't even remember how many it was, so how many times I have to hit tab to find it. But actually, if I look in the corner, I could just say, oh, this one has nitrous. That's probably it. Yep. There is the dragon ready to continue driving. And now we can drive it up the hill. Again, this is basically a drag car. So it doesn't have the best handling, but it's good enough. We can make this thing move around corners. And somehow the brakes are overheating in the back. And I don't really know how. Like, I haven't hit the brakes all that much at all. But they're overheating. That's just strange. Doesn't matter, it's a drag car. It's not made to slow down more than once. Yeah, here we are slowing down a lot for these corners. But once you exit those corners, then you can get moving. I think this tunnel is straight enough where we can really put some power down and get over 100 miles per hour. Yes. And here we go, 120, 30. We are moving and we ain't slowing down for nothing. Up the hill. And now the crash will finish off the dragon. It's funny how some cars you got to say the. This is one of the cars that earned the in front of its name. It's going to slide down this hill for a little bit, isn't it? I'll let it slide down. Maybe it'll hit a rock and flip itself upright or a tree or something. Now he's going to stay upside down all the way until it gets stuck in the trees. So we got to flip it manually. Now I don't know if I have the frame or the exhaust. That was the exhaust. Let's try this again, grabbing the frame. Flip it upright. There, it just took a second. So, we can take a look at the damage. Surprisingly little damage to the roof for how violent that crash looked. And now we gotta get back up to the road, which means it's a little bit of teleportation because we were rolling down that hill for a while and we were flying for a while. Back in the tunnel, we're gonna take a look at the next vehicle, which is the ETKI series. And one of my favorites from this is the 220 TIX 
Group B. So this vehicle is very obviously inspired by the old Audi Group B rally car. That's very, very iconic. It even has a five-cylinder engine in it, so it has that same five-cylinder sound. And I wanted to get out of the tunnel before we take a look at it. So it has this bodywork that looks so tacked on. Like, you just strap this thing on it. It's like, yeah, we're good to go. We tested it in the tunnel. It works, okay? This is a race car, man. It's not made to look good. It's made to go fast. And again, all of that aerodynamic attachments, very, very obviously inspired by the classic Audi Quattro S1 Group B rally car. And this thing drives just as fast as one. We are going up a pretty steep hill and we are over 100 miles per hour and still accelerating. And I do love the sound of a good five cylinder engine, but I don't believe this is a custom sound. I think this is just the sound from the Chariers and it's just being used here because that's also a five cylinder engine. And we are going so fast we're flying a bit and you can tell it has downforce. That rear end stayed down with the front lifted a bit. And now I think it's gonna be ruined, yep. That definitely ruined it. Stupid tree. It was doing fine until you grabbed it. That unfortunately did ruin it. We'll see if we can get it flipped upright so we can take a look at the bodywork. It's stuck in the tree, unfortunately. So we'll do a little save. Pulling it off of the tree back onto the dirt. That's fine. It's a rally car. It can go in the dirt. And then we'll load it up. And now we should be able to flip it upright without it being a pain. There we are. So you can see the damage on the front to that extra bodywork. Looks good to me. Rear got some damage as well. Yeah, we really ruined it from <laughs> that side. Woo! But the custom rear hatch looked good. So next up, we're going to go to the K-Series. On the K-Series, it's pretty similar to what we saw with the other ETK, where there's nothing really cool about the mod. You just have some very solid configurations that are pleasant to drive. So this one, again, has a V8 twin turbocharged engine, so it's nice and fast. And then it has a couple of custom parts on it as well. But they're very small things, like slightly different side skirts. So with this thing, we should be able to go pretty fast. And when you have a fast car, you know what you do with one of those? You ride the wall. This is going to probably end really, really bad. In fact, I'm going to make sure it ends really, really badly by riding this wall way higher than you should and then flying into the trees. We are stuck in the trees and there's not really much to look at the damage here because it's all normal body work for the most part. So we will bring it back up to the road and then we're going to move on to the Legron. And with the Legron, we have a not wagon. We have the Aero Coupe, which in a way is kind of like a wagon, but not exactly. So when I look at this vehicle, it reminds me of the old Ford Sierra Cosworth race car that they used to have. The overall shape of the body is pretty similar to that, but the wing on the back, it has a design that looks like that. Like the only other car I can think of that has a wing like that are those Ford Sierras. It's a very unique style and don't ask how the trunk works here because I'm not quite sure. That's something we'll have to test if we do a full video for the Legrand section of the mod, which very well might happen because there's quite a bit under the Legrand. And the Legrand is one of the most underrated stock cars there is to me. You know what I should do for a video sometime? I should rate all the stock cars from best to worst. Oh, we got some nice air, but we can't land it. We are upside down and crashing. Don't get stuck in the trees. Please don't be stuck in the trees. Yes. Well, up right, yeah. So we didn't really damage the rear of the vehicle too much, so it still looks pretty much just fresh and good to go. But that's all right. Next up, we're gonna go to the Miramar. And with the Miramar, there's actually only two versions. We got the Custom and the Akunomi. We're gonna go with that one because I'm sure I mispronounced the name. So I apologize. I'll drive him around for a little bit. Well, we're stuck already. So that's a little bit. Let's get off of the rocks. And now we'll drive him around for a little bit. And yes, this isn't really the ideal location to drive the Miramar. That's my fault for the way I write scripts. Usually it's like, okay, I have this car. I want to say this, this, and this about it. So incorporate it in, fill in the space, get a crash, and get to the next car. I don't actually plan out the exact route unless I'm doing a video for a map, in which case it makes sense to do it. But if I'm doing a thing for cars, I don't plan out the exact route. So sometimes you have weird situations like this where it's like, yeah, we have a perfectly ordinary car and we're taking it off-roading because I happen to be in the dirt. That's the only excuse I got. Good news is, is soon there'll be paved roads and then we can really try this thing out. So this is supposed to be a homologation special. So it's a specially made factory car that only exists so they can use a similar version in a racing series. More manufacturers need to do that. Like, 
Camrys are in NASCAR. I want a 500 horsepower V8 rear wheel drive Camry, dang it. Oh, we're flying and we are crashing and rolling. And I don't think it's gonna be able to drive after that, is it? We got momentum, but uh, nah, we can't do anything. Do you see how far that rear end is kicking up? We can't put down power like this. Look at that, that wheel is a good foot in the air. So at this point in time, we're about halfway through all the vehicles. Yet this video is already decently long, and if I tried to go through all of the rest of them as well, this video would easily be over 40 minutes long, and nobody's gonna watch a video that long. So, I'm gonna go ahead and split it into two. Yeah, even when we're doing just a simple overview of the mod, the mod is so big, the overview must be split into multiple videos. So until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by the number of vehicles that are in the mod. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.